very innovative uh, collaboration in the Netherlands, water companies, technological companies together. And in the meantime, uh, Maxime, would you please come form forward? Maxime uh, worked uh, uh, with Wetsis, uh, that uh, institute in, up, in the Netherlands, up in the north of the Netherlands, Leeuwarden, where he did his PhD on membrane bioreactors, yes. And now he's going to speak about, and uh, they do it up, uh, downstream, some do it upstream. Um, the title of his lecture is uh, Downstream to improve performance of the membrane. I'm very curious to hear that. Okay. Well, I'm uh, now working with a pack which is based in uh, Friesland. It's a water company that has been working with water for many, many years. And now we start to get busy with the membrane together with Berhoff. The, what I will present today is a little background on the membrane bioreactors, because I don't think it's new f for many of you, but still for those who never heard about it. Then discuss a little bit about the different configurations. I will then present the downstream system, what makes it special, what are the advantages, and then I have two case studies where we compare the downstream with a submerged system and the downstream with an upstream system. I would like to thank uh, Berghoff and uh, PharmaFilter for the cooperation on this work. Already? Yeah. yeah, so the membrane bioreactor. The idea of the membrane bioreactor is to combine the biological treatment with the physical separation all in the same place. What you have in a conventional treatment, you need a clarifier in order to remove your sludge. In a membrane bioreactor, you change that by a membrane and then you can have some advantage, but there are also some drawbacks. Why would someone choose to go for a membrane bioreactor? Because you, re you don't need the settling. You can run with a higher sludge concentration, so you need a smaller footprint. Also, you don't need those big round clarifiers. You have a total solid retention. Everything that is smaller, uh, bigger than the membrane will be physically retained. You have uh, improved effluent quality, again, thanks to the physical separation, but also because you can, in, uh, without the settling, you can retain some uh, bacteria that might not be retained in the other case, and then they can actually degrade some compounds that would not be degraded otherwise, if I've been clear. And then there is also a pot sometimes a potential for reuse, so as pretreatment for reverse osmosis for drinking water or as direct reuse in irrigation or uh, sometimes uh, industry water. The drawbacks are that uh, running those membranes costs some energy, so you have a higher energy uh, consumption compared to conventional. That you need, yes. Oh. Oh. Okay, that you need membrane cleaning. When you, get, you start to have the fouling, you need some chemicals in order to clean that membrane. And then uh, those chemicals can give some uh, nasty byproducts and that you don't want to have that in your system. And also you can have a higher cost because the membranes are not yet as cheap as they could be. So those higher costs due to the membrane installation. But all those can be back to the membrane fouling. If you decrease the membrane fouling, you will need less energy less membrane surface, so lower costs, and also you will not need to clean that often. So what are the membrane configuration, the, conven the general systems? You have the side stream system, where you use high flux, high, t uh, high pressure, and uh, you just put your water very fast through this membrane, and then you, you take your uh, permeate out. Instead of having the membrane on the side like that, you can put, submerge them inside your reactor. Then you have submerged membrane bioreactor. That's this one. And then you have the air-assisted assi side stream. It's mostly tubular membranes. And by adding some air inside the membrane, you don't need such a high shear. And then you can uh, have the, yeah, the shear by the air, and it's 
nicer for the sludge and also for the for the system. So what are the advantages and drawbacks from uh, those configuration? With the side stream, you have the drawback of needing a high pressure and a high cross flow velocity, but you have the advantage of having high fluxes, so compact system, but it costs a lot of energy. In the case of the submerged, it's low pressure, low energy, but you need a lot of air to scour your membranes. You need to run at relatively low fluxes, and uh, you need a higher volume because your membrane is submerged in the system. And then you have the side stream with air. Then it's, you can run compared, it would be more compared to membrane because you are still with those low, low relatively low cross flow velocity. It's nicer, less stress on the sludge. But uh, you can run at higher fluxes and you can more, it's still more compact. So you, in order to clean it and so on, it's much easier to work with. Then now the downstream system. That's a system uh, now applied in cooperation between uh, PAC together with Berghoff. The head, the, what it's all about is this head where you have the sludge coming in into your membrane from the top, now the bottom. Then thanks to oops, a venturi, the air is sucked in the system, so you don't need to overpressurize your air so that it comes in. This has the advantage of needed less energy to push the air inside the system, but it also has another effect, which is in the case when one, in one tube you don't have the air bubble, then the column of water is more heavy, then the flow in this specific tube is higher, and then it sucks more air in. So you have a self-regulating air distribution, and basically every bubble is used on a membrane, and every membrane meets a bubble once in a while. So you have this optimized uh, air distribution. And then you have, a, it's also an advantage with the modular design. It's quite easy. You can put it on the side. If you need to change the membrane, you don't have to empty your whole membrane tank. You can just take one out. For the cleaning, you don't have to fill up your whole membrane tank with chemicals. That's the advantage that you have with side stream. And also, it's cleaner for the operators. So those are the advantages of the downstream system, the, head, uh, the membrane head that requires much less energy to push the air in. It's always more energy efficient to pump water around than to pump air around. You have the homogeneous air distribution, and then you have the modular design. So now I'm going to present uh, two case studies. First case study was uh, in a, on a comparison with the existing uh, submerged membrane bioreactor. The submerged membrane bioreactor had quite a few problems when we arrived there. You will see why. But, uh, and then we had this uh, pilot, uh, pilot system with the two membranes in the back, a buffer tank where we were recirculating the sludge through, and here on the top you have the heads. So why it was not going so well? Well, it was a potato processing factory, and uh, the system they had at that moment was an MBR used as post-treatment after an uh, upflow anaerobic sludge bed. It was a submerged hollow fiber membranes, but the problem they had there is that you can see there it's a picture of the sludge, you don't see it so well, but it's it was very viscous sludge. They had up to 35 grams per liter of sludge, from which 76% uh, was uh, inorganics. This uh, inorganics, we found it to be a lot of clay, fine sand, and uh, also potato skins. Those are organics, but they were also problematic in their systems. The, their existing MBR was extremely high fouling, and uh, so we did a, a pilot study next to that with a downstream system in order to see what we could bring with this system. Those were the, the values. We, did, we ran the pilot for six months. Well, every time I was going there, in one of the tanks, it was like that. It was chemical cleaning of one of their, they had four streams for uh, tanks for the membranes. There was always one being cleaned when I was there. there uh, no, 
average time between chemical cleaning was two weeks. They were running at an average flux of 10 liters per square meter per hour, and they had a ranging transmembrane pressure from 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 bar. That's not a very well functioning uh, MBR. You could have expected that when you looked at the sludge to start with. But then we had our downstream pilot. The time needed between the chemical cleaning instead of being two weeks, we could run for two months before chemical cleaning uh, was necessary. We could reach an average flux over those two months of 22 liters per square meter per hour. And uh, we stayed within our transmembrane pressure of maximum half a bar. Also the air demand, we, in a, we had to add a blower there because, the visco because of the viscosity of the sludge, you had too much resistance in the tube, so we had to just help a little bit the, the air to come in. But our air demand was four times, uh, five times as low as the one from the submerged. That's thanks to this good repartition of the air. So, the, then the permeate quality was the same. There was no clear difference on the permeate quality. Slightly better because our membrane had a slightly smaller pore size than the one uh, used there, but uh, nothing real, uh, really different. Uh, it could be noted that uh, their uh, nitrogen removal was not working very well, and that can be explained by the sludge they had there. So the, uh, the conclusion from this study, when you compare it to the submerged, is that we found a much lower fouling propensity from the downstream system. The, we could run for four times as long with twice the flux. The aeration demand was also much lower. <coughs> Uh, chemical use for cleaning was much lower because it was necessary less often, but we also because we did not have to fill up every time a full membrane tank. We had a more compact system. It was uh, the effluent quality was not worse, even better. And then we could still use a full scale because in this small uh, pilot scale, we could not really work out the energy demand, but uh, when you already look at the aeration demand, we would expect to be at least as good. Yeah. Then you have the system which is running at a pharma filter. Then you have a comparison with the upstream system. It's an interesting case because at the same place you have on the same sludge using the same membranes, you have on one side the downstream and on the other side the upstream uh, systems. And they are both running in parallel. What is Pharma Filter? It's uh, situated at a hospital in uh, Delft. <laughs> then uh, um, in parallel, you have airlift and downstream. Both systems are running with the identical membrane. It's uh, Berghoff uh, membranes. The, you have exactly the same sludge to be filtered. The suspended solids in this system was much more conventional with a uh, between 5 and 10 grams per liter, up to 70% of volatiles. And then uh, the old pharma filter system includes a digestion, the MBR, then ozone and activated carbon post-treatment. The values that we, when we compare the two, what can be noted is that uh, the time between the chemical cleaning was relatively longer with the downstream, could run as a slightly higher flux, but in this case, the flux was not pushed high because the idea of the operators is to do as less chemical cleaning as possible. It could run still at higher fluxes. The air demand is, again, a factor of five times lower in the downstream compared to the upstream. That's thanks to the good repartition of the air. The pressure of the air to be put in is uh, three times lower. That does also a big difference in the cost. And all those together can give the big difference in uh, energy demand with a factor three between the downstream and the upstream. Uh, don't have values directly after the MBR. That's after the ozonation and the uh, activated carbon. The system is working very well. They also have a good uh, 
very important removal of micropollutants. So when you compare it to the upstream, you have a lower fouling tendency with the downstream. You do have a more robust system. Uh, it happened at one point when they, ha they have bioplastic there. Some went bypassed the, the grid at the entrance, didn't go to the digester, but went to the MBR. The, uh, the upstream system got clogged while the downstream could still run with it. You have a lower aeration demand at a lower pressure, lower energy consumption, and you all still have a potential for a higher flux. In this case, with a higher flux, you will also have a lower energy per, uh, per cubic meter of filtered water. That's how it would be delivered with the heads on the top as a stacked system. So, yeah. Lower fouling, chemical use, but more efficient aeration and uh, lower energy demand. And uh, if you want to have a look at the downstream, at the setup in uh, running, you have it at the stand of Berhof. There is a demonstration where you can see the bubbles going from the top to the bottom. And it's at stand uh, 3100. Yeah. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> Maxime, for this very nice presentation.